Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we create photo realistic assets together. I'm really excited about today's video because it's the first part of a four part series on beginner hard surface texturing in Mari. In this series, I will explain in detail the step by step process that you can take to texture any hard surface asset. So before we start, I want to give you an overview of the strategy and plan. The complexity of different hard surface projects vary, but the basic steps stay the same. Follow these steps as a general guide, and then you can break them down into smaller steps that are tailored to the specific project you're working on. I always like to explain the big picture for you first. So what are the main steps that should guide your project? The first one is concept and reference. You need to be very sure about what's the end result you're going for. The next step, you need to analyze your reference and determine what kind of different material you're going to have to make for this asset. The next step is to prepare the textures, either by searching in different resources or make them by yourself. Next, you have to arrange all these different materials according to how it's built in real life. After that, you need to refine your material masks and making sure that it's capturing the characteristics of the material. This is where you also create different type of damages for the material. The next step is to create what's on top of the material. And in general, they are the dirt, the grunge, and any kind of grime. After that, we need to generate all the supporting maps, such as roughness and bump, from the diffuse map we've been creating. The last step is rendering where we set up appropriate lighting and adjusting shader to get the final look of our asset. Now you have a general idea of uh, the basic thinking process. We can start on our first step, which is determining our concept and reference. So when you're at this stage, the first thing you have to think about is, is there a fixed concept or photo you're trying to match? If the answer is yes, then things are pretty straightforward. You're going to have to start to analyze your concept and determine the different type of material you have to build. If the answer is no, then you're going to have to go on a search process and collecting all kinds of concept and photo that you would like to have in your asset. When you're doing your own research, remember that the more specific the reference, the better. If you are going for a photorealistic style, the best case scenario is that you have something exactly that you can copy. For this asset I'm using to demonstrate the whole process, I actually got it from Turbo Squid. So there's no fixed concept or photo that I can use as my main texturing reference. I will have to make my own decision of uh, what kind of material I wanted to have and how many different material I would like to have. In my personal experience, instead of making those decisions out of the blue, it's better to start to look at some artwork that inspire you and you like, and then you can make a decision what kind of style you want to go for. So I started to think about certain type of style of robots that I really liked in the past. I don't know if you guys ever heard of this artist, Ashley Wood. I always really love the type of robot that he designs. They are always very chunky looking and they are always very damaged and have a lot of interesting detail on top. It is always a little bit more fun for a texture artist to texture something that's dirty and damaged. So I think uh, I want to have that for my robot as well. I also always really like how the kind of metal he has for his robot underneath is always this kind of like a dark, heavy metal. It's a very cool look and I definitely want to have that as well. Now I know the type of look I'm going for. I'm going to start to analyze what kind of material I'm going to have to achieve that type of look. Things like how many different kind of materials that are on this asset. It will be very helpful to start to make a list of every type of material you will have to create. Once you're clear about all the materials, now it's time to think about what kind of different textures you're going to have to collect to create those materials. Also be aware if there's any kind of mixed material on the list, such as coated paint. In my experience, material mask for something like that is going to be a little bit more complex than a single material. It's also important to analyze how the material is laid out on this object, what is underneath and what is on top. I found it in general, it's better to build your material according to how this material is built in real life. So this is how I separated material for this object. 
after I have determined that the Ashley Wood concept is the type of a look I want to go for. To best visualize my idea, I assigned a few different color blend and lumber simple material on top of、uh, this asset. To best mimic the concept, I decided that、uh, the base is heavy metal, but I separate the metal into three types. One is iron material, one is copper material, and one is steel material. And on top of that, there's certain area that is painted. The reason why I want to have a few different material is for variety, because underneath there's a huge chunk of metal going on, and if they're all the same material, it's gonna look super boring. And when I determine which metal assigned to which pieces, I'm looking to demonstrate the complexity of the modeling and breaking up the shape. Once I determined which piece is which material, I also reorganize the UV according to the material. This is a very standard production way to organize your UV for easy selection. I try to group the same material together as much as possible. If they all can have their own U dim without wasting too much space, would be great. Now I have determined all the different material I want to have for my asset. I can start to collect textures for them. So, what are the different ways to go about finding the best texture for your asset? You have in general two ways to go about it. One way is to get pre-made textures, which is not going to be free, or you will make your own textures. These are the most common pre-made texture sites. One is Texture.com. It has scan textures, pre-made tileable textures, and some PBR textures. Another one is Megascan, which is I believe completely scan textures, and the next one is Surface Mimic,、uh, which mostly is for displacement maps. For human skin texture, you also have Texture X Y Z. The great thing about using these sites, obviously, is you save time and you get very high quality textures. The downside, obviously, is you will have to pay for them. Either you pay for texture or you make texture yourself. I hope you start to build your own texture library. With time, this will be your greatest resource. I want to quickly show you how I organize my own texture library. In general, I separate it into two major sections. One is tileable texture, and another one is untileable texture. I found that's the best way to start the organization. And within each section, I will separate them into different material. The reason why I want to put all the tileable map together is. That I know anything I grab from this section, I don't have to worry about them. I can just throw them into my tile nodes. So when I texture any material, I come here first. If you can find something that works, then I know I don't have to make anything. As you collect more and more texture like this, it's gonna really speed up your process. The reason why tileable textures are so valuable because it's the base of building any type of material. A great tileable texture can capture the characteristics of a material really well, and anything you want to add on top, any kind of customization, will become much easier. In my personal experience, without fail, doesn't matter if I'm making something hard surface procedural or something organic and very painterly, I always start with a tileable texture. So, what do you do when you search your entire texture library and couldn't find the kind of texture you're looking for? And you couldn't get anything online either. They don't have it either, or it's too expensive for you. This is when you have to make your own textures. And I'm about to show you some tips that can convert any type of texture into a tileable texture. When all else fails, we go to Google. So, for example, if I search for rock textures, I will go to Advanced Search and set my search to maybe 2K. Anything smaller than that, it's not worth my time. So these are the search results I have. I will look through them.、Um, I don't have anything to match at the moment, so I'm just gonna select something that looks really decent. This one looks good enough for a demonstration. I'm gonna save that to my desktop. I will demonstrate how to make this texture into a tileable texture in Photoshop. I'm pretty sure you can do the same in Nuke as well, but I'm gonna use Photoshop as an example. This one looks a little bit too messy, so I'm not gonna do anything about that.、Uh, with this texture, first thing I will do is to change the canvas size. I want to make it into a square. So you just go to canvas size and make the width and the height the same number. Now we have a square texture, but obviously this doesn't cover the entire area. 
I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate it around, shift it around to cover up the areas that's not there. When you're doing this, try not to make it too repetitive. If you can find some unique area that you can use to fill up the blanks, that would be the best. It definitely doesn't have to be perfect. We will fix all the problems after. So once I'm happy with how it's arranged, I combine all the three layers into one. Now I will be only working on the merged version of the texture. First, of course, we can see the seams where uh, we cover up the blank area. What I would do is to select the area, shift select another area that I can see a seam, and then I press shift backspace. Under contents, instead of choosing a color, I use content aware and press OK. Here, Photoshop basically is using what's around the selection to fill up what's inside of the selection and got rid of the seams. And now I'm going to start to work on fixing the edges. If you go to filter, uh, the last option other and go to offset. Here I'm offsetting the texture 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel and you can start to see the edge seams. So I'm going to do the same thing I done before with these seams as well. I'm going to do a selection and the shift select the horizontal area and shift backspace and using content aware again to get rid of all the seams. I still see another seams on the side. So I'm going to do the same process again with this area as well. So after we're done this, this should be a tileable texture at this point. But just to double check, I'm going to use offset again to move the texture around to check other areas, see if there's anything that stands out that still needs fixing. So far, everything looks pretty good, but just to be completely sure, I'm going to offset it again to another direction. I see a little bit of a line towards the bottom and it's pretty small. So I'm just going to use clone stamp to get rid of that. So now if I offset it back to its original position, this should be a complete tileable texture at this moment. That is everything I want to show you for the first part of this hard surface texturing course in Mari. In the next part, we will get into building the basic material and the material masks. I hope you got something from this. And if you enjoy the content, please like the video. It will really help with the YouTube algorithm and let the video be seen by more people. And that's everything for today. I will see you in the next one.